So we welcome all of you to the today's session, which has been brought to you by the People Management Committee of the Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It's a very relevant topic in the current scenario. So many a message is clear through the topic itself. It's navigating the new normal beyond the classrooms. Organizations on furloughs, reductions, and motivation, the HR challenge. Without wasting time, I will request our chairperson of the People Management Committee, Mr. Somesh Das Gupta, to start the session. But before that, I'll request all the participants to kindly keep their video off and the audio on a mute mode. So it will help all of us to get the deliberations clearly. Only we will request the speakers to keep their video on and audio on a mute mode. As the moderator will be conducting the session, so he will be requesting the speakers. When he will be requesting the speakers, then the person can keep it on, unmute it, and once it is over, again you can keep back to the mute mode, so that you know the entire deliberations is clear to everybody. Any participant, if you are having any question, please put your questions in the text message there. We will be taking the questions, which will be taken by the moderator, and accordingly he will be asking to the speakers. So with this, I request Mr. Somesh Das Gupta to please formally start the session. Thank you, Shivam. Good afternoon, all my friends. On behalf of Bengal Chamber, hello, Harbinder. Good afternoon. Uh, Hi, sir. How are you? Long time. <laughs> on on behalf of Bengal Chamber and the Bengal Chamber People Management Committee, I welcome you all in this webinar on the, the idea of uh, navigating the new normal beyond classroom organization for his reduction and motivation. As there are a lot of people are outside Bengal, and some of the speakers also first time coming to this uh, webinar, let me introduce something for the Bengal Chamber of Commerce. Bengal Chamber of Commerce is the oldest institution in this particular area in India. It is formed in 18, 1833, and for more than 100 years, we are involved in healthcare, people management, education, energy environment, entrepreneurship development, IT, finance and banking, taxation, MSME development, manufacturing and tourism. So it's not only a, a chamber of commerce for the training and develop activity, it is the custodian of the knowledge as and when required, we are providing knowledge, sharing knowledge to the state government and central government. Today, I'm very happy that people management, uh, people management committee of Bengal chamber is taking the initiative to design such important question, important seminar or webinar, which is very important in today's times. One thing I just want to tell you before the program, the program said navigating new normal. I'm sharing my friends, now navigating, we are already in new normal. You think today in the full working day on Friday, around four o'clock, which, which is a peak office hours, we are arranging a webinar sitting in the houses, in different corner of the country, we are all sitting together and having an important issue discussion. That is the product of the new normal. This group may koi hai jo export import business kar rahe hai. Agar usko investment chahiye to mujhe contact kijiye. Hello. So, so the thing is, only seven days back, we have identified a webinar can be conducted, and we thought we need a speaker all over India, and there will be a good amount of gathering. Then with only for five days, we are today, we have collected, we have invited speakers, all very distinguished speakers from all part of India. In, in this five days time, we have more than 220 people gathered. And in, it means the, the strength of this new normal, speed, cost effectiveness, and flexibility. We have organized such a program with zero cost. Speed was tremendous because it's not possible to contact people not contact people, uh, invite people in seven days. So that is the power of new normal. I am very happy Jaydeep will coordinate such a session when we're discussing about new normal. And the second part I'm to tell you to all, we here are interested to know the sectorial perspective. If we talk about today's speaker, we have invited speaker from different sectors just to know the sectorial perspective. The reason is every sector has impacted differently. When the sectors are impacted differently, common people should know the magnitude and effect of the such impact. For the purpose, today we have a speaker like Santesh Bhave, he's the director of HR and IR Bharat Coach. Mr. Bhave will definitely share something on auto industry and also the manufacturing industry. 
that is very very important hello uh, that is very very important then second speaker is like you know dr tanya mishra tanya is a global chief human resource officer sr projects dubai so from tuni uh, from tanya's presentation or presentation we'll find out something for project and manufacturing perspective similarly shila dasgupta lead disability and neuro uh, diversity of pcs so this shila will tell something of the it its sector and finally mr dipankar ghosh head human resource bajaj consumer care will share something of the retail so today we have a representative from retail manufacturing project it and joydeep itself will be representing infrastructure and mdfc for so finance sector so we are a wonderful speaker and moderator today where the people will be benefited to know and each each and every challenge and way forward to handle covid 19 in these five distinct different sectors with this idea i am with a good expectation as a participant to learn lot of new thing i am requesting jadeep chatterjee moderator of the particular program to carry forward jadeep please you carry forward thank you shomesh da uh, thanks everybody <clears throat> we begin the formal you know i didn't expect a 160 participation uh, in a in a, in a, ch in a chilly 4 pm evening but the fact that you felt that it was required a bit of maybe our push maybe because of our network b was it may uh, delighted to have uh, to to distinguishedly uh, moderate a session of tanaya dr bhave shrila and mr ghosh and on a topic which i personally felt that uh, is important as much as important it can be uh, when we find mr modi speaking about jaan hai to jahan hai and in fact every person now talking about how do we combat covid so the central theme of today's conversation hovers around the heart of resilient leadership and our response to covid-19 and why i chose the word leadership is because because that is the amalgating factor that will bind employers employees and organizations so as somebody told to me the three c's are no more about the, the compliance confidence or the conviction it is about customer covid combat and confidence you know and that that is what the crux of today's conversation is all about i don't want to make it a two hour a uh, monologue uh, that the pope speaking from the vatican uh, but i just wanted to make it as interactive as possible you know the first theme and i, I have decided this whole uh, 40 45 minutes or one hour conversation we will break them into you know five distinguished themes the first theme will be about leadership and the first theme of leadership is about saying that is the leadership in the crucible of crisis it is a crisis a crisis that nobody knew not in the in the in the near future we should have such a crisis and you know right from the from the people of mr tata to ambani's to the person who is running his uh, grocery shop is also doing a leadership role and today leadership is in the crucible of crisis so my first conversation thoughts rather the opening remarks that i would love to hear from each one of you is about it is about crisis and it is about crisis management so what is it that in your mind is coming when you first thought about covid and shutting off offices workers being demotivated restructuring of cost so when the word crisis hits you in life today and when crisis hits you when you were not in crisis what has changed in your mind so maybe we start with shrila and your opening thoughts about covid crisis and leadership in the crucible of this crisis uh okay thank you very much jaydi for putting me on the spot but uh, you know the word crisis really doesn't come into the vocabulary yes it was like a complete paradigm shift in reality but i think at least i'm talking from um, the sector that i'm coming from we really saw it as an opportunity it was also something that you can't do anything it is what it is so you have to respond to it with with the best possible resources whether it's human whatever resources you have you just deal with it so uh, the mo uh, maybe i am reading it wrong but i think somehow in the english language we have always had uh, the word or the term crisis uh, connoted in a negative fashion 
and uh, this is a part of reality this as shomishta said is uh, the new normal we are in a situation how do we move on with life so i think it is a question of yes probably a momentary this thing that oh we didn't think of this but i don't think i don't i think none of us had the luxury to uh, even spend more than maybe half an hour on saying that oh my god oh my god what's happened it was like okay let's get on to what we can do correct i don't know if that answers your question but yes, uh, yes. i as, think it is you, i yeah. think you said it right the word is navigating is what you basically wanted to say yes yes that you never know what is coming uh, but it is navigating so let's uh, talk to uh, tanaya and and what is it for you when you when when you saw this and the crisis word comes to your mind and how is the definition changed um jodi bai would like to say yes it is a crisis it is a pandemic it is a crisis uh, i would define this uh, and you, and you said what is leadership to me i would define this as as ems now what do i mean i don't mean courier services what i mean is empathy empathy for uh, the from the organization perspective to the employees from the employees to the to the, to the general public but empathy and togetherness everywhere because you know i ha- i come from a company where i have covid affected people the other one is mental wellness because people are at home so they the crisis is different and it is hitting people in three or four different ways one is in terms of financial crisis emotional crisis personal crisis uh, so i think that that is one piece around mental wellness and the third is speed it is the agility and speed of which you are able to answer a particular situation because the situation which is coming is like uh, and most of you in bengal have been are familiar with cricket and you love cricket it's like a bouncer you don't know which way it is coming it is about ensuring that you are able to pick up the ball and you know bat in whatever in, in your best foot forward so i think uh, that is my answer very good i think you know so 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 we are moving so we said what trida said about navigation tanaya put absolute elements of human element personal professional emotional financial there can't be better way to describe a crisis mr ghosh how yeah. do you want mm-hmm. to take it forward yeah okay uh, good afternoon everybody thanks jaydi for roping me in so to me when i look at in the last 45 days i see that in three phases and for me more than crisis it is an adoption to change and if you see even in this 45 days we have kind of undergone a v shaped typical change adoption model where initially we thought it's just for 15 days and we will start normal life and you were really preparing yourself for those 15 days and then then 15 days started realizing that it is probably not going to end soon the 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 the, the, the pandemic the reality of news coming from all across the globe the the financial situation that we are all going through i the the, the health news that were coming in the media i think those all started pouring to us in the next few days and in the last few days i see we are now really standing up to the new normal we know we have to go back to our normal life may not be this week but in few weeks for sure we know we have to go out to our new normal without a vaccine in place uh, which means we have to follow certain rules and regulations which will be very different we know there would be tremendous financial hardship social hardship uh, that's going to come and we have to adapt to that uh, we know we were entering into our world some of us all of us many of us here who are privileged we are entering into our into our world where if suddenly tomorrow there is an emergency we may not have a proper medical and a healthcare backup service we have we may have to recuperate it at home so these are the new real normals that's mm-hmm. coming and despite that and despite that there are organizations who have responded with lot of as tanaya said agility and uh, reaction to what's right and what i really see is emergence of a situational leadership it 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 follows beyond so our shopkeeper probably have shown more leadership than probably what the bigger retail chains have done they they have taken risk and with a mix of 
uh, economic consideration, but also to serve your local community. They come out and serve us every day for the last 45 days. The medical health workers, our organization, the plant people. So we in corporate, we are happily sitting at home and doing 12 hours of uh, phone calls, very safely entrenched in our home. But our plant colleagues are actually on the field for the last one month, making sure that production is up and running. They are taking permissions. They are arranging multiple things. So I think it's a portfolio and it really had helped us understand how we change and react to this change that has come. And it has all been a great learning for us. That's how I would say. Great. You know, I, I can see the chats because I'm following the chats because I don't want to make it a conversation where I will decipher the road. You know, and before I go to you, Mr. Fawe, you know, the, the, the 180 people that are there, they are wanting to talk about reality. You know, and, and so coincidental that I'm going to talk to you about reality. And the, the person said, talk about reality and not about soft things. Talk about things that matter to us. Talk about layoffs. Talk about the reality that bites. Talk about our crisis. So, Mr. Bhave, I will come to this point to you straight, straight from the horse's mouth, without absolutely not navigating to the circles of thoughts. How is it hitting the common worker? Are they getting upset or are they realizing what is in for them? And they are with the employer's side or they are on more them terms thinking about their homes, their lives and their family. Where is it that we stand today? Okay, good afternoon, everyone. And then uh, very happy to be part of this uh, webinar. Uh, I heard views of my colleague, esteemed uh, speakers for his now. And then I will place before you in the next about five to seven minutes. What is that perception workers have in this crisis management? So workers and other employees for us there. Uh, I would like to place my view over here when you said worker these days in organization, particularly in manufacturing organization, we don't talk anything about blue collar, white collar. In fact, today we have collarless employees for us there. So I would like to put it in this way that how generally the perception of employees at all level is. In my opinion, employees are looking to this position in about five to six point A, they are looking at how their leaders are responding for this there. Number two, they are thinking in this crisis situation, who is going to motivate for us there? See, they are thinking that whether they themselves or their bosses or subordinates, are they having capacity to put positive influence on decision makers to come out from this there? Next thing, the point what we have evaluated, Workers and employees, they are very minutely observing whether the organization with which they work, whether it has capacity to absorb this crisis and then after absorbing how organization will come out as a winning organization. So therefore, they are also looking for is there. How is it that my management is going to respond for is there? And then how is it that my livelihood and continuity with this organization is? And then last but not the least employees are looking for this there as a change a performer those who are attending office two punch and one lunch whether they will continue or really those who are performing they will continue for is there so to say in bharat forge where i am working we have about 11000 people they are working directly so if you say 11000 at least husband wife and one kid so we are responsible for the battery of about 33 to 35,000 people. And then employees are looking from this, from entire gamut for is there, that after this pandemic situation, how my management is responding for is there, and how there is likelihood of continuing me as a part of this organization. Will it be positive or will it be negative? And from that context, let me tell you that first 10 to 15 days, everyone really enjoyed. There was not a fear factor at all. After about 16 to maybe about 30th, 40th day, people started inquiring that what's really exactly going to happen for is that. And let me tell you, during last about 15 days time, people are to certain extent, they are worried. Unlike other organizations, company where I work, uh, there is very less chance to work from home because we are working, ours is a company where we produce component for automotive. And therefore, requirement of people on the job, physical, is very much necessary. So here is a requirement, how we can get in touch with people.
when we go ahead with the course of this discussion, I will tell you exactly how effective and concrete steps we have taken to ensure that the mood with which people have left on 22nd of March, probably with the renewed and high mood, people will join our organization. This is what is my thought, what I thought of placing before this gathering. Thank you. I think uh, very touching, Mr. Bhave. You know, what really hit me is, is the extended family that you are taking care of. And I think that's more important. That's the mood point. Uh, you know, I, I we have with us uh, Bipla Banerjee, CHR of ABD. And, you know, I just wanted to uh, rope in him if he's around. Uh, Bipla, are you around here? And, and we can have your few thoughts because before we get into the whole thing. Uh, Bipla, are you here? Otherwise, I'll just uh, move on. I think he's just moved off. Okay. Uh, you know, if he, if he comes back, do let me know. I mean, I would love to hear Bipla has been a, a terrific sure. uh, presenter and a speaker. So it'd be, it'd be lovely to have him as well. You know, so reading uh, last night, a lot of, lot of, lot of thought, a lot of papers on this, uh, you know, leadership of the crisis, you know, and somebody, uh, a very, la very large business conglomerate leader said, you know, something to me, which has really touched me. And I just wanted to throw my thoughts to it. He said, at this point of crisis, uh, do focus uh, on speed rather than elegance, because your decisions will be based on imperfect information, because expediency is essential rather than elegance. So I come to this guy, gentleman in Deloitte as well, and I said, uh, hey, you, 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 you are somebody who talks about behaviors, you talk about, uh, talk about how to manage organizations. Uh, tell me, do, do, does, it, does it make sense? Uh, and to me a lot that at this point of time when we are managing lives and crisis we should aim for speed rather than perfection because a lot of our decisions will be based on imperfect and improper decision making because expediency is essential than making it right at the first time where do you see it and maybe we'll start with mr ghosh because you are on a business and a sector which is on the roll on the feet, selling sanitizers, soaps, detergents, powder, and you at the center of it will have to take decisions on people, lives. Are you thinking the same way, speed over elegance, or, or both together? Sure. Good. Okay, so there are two facets to it. Uh, typically, in an FMCG, we would have a, a time period of six months to from a concept to a market a timeline for a product to be introduced. That's typically you would be looking at if you are entering into a new category. We entered into a new category called sanitizer last month uh, from thought process to going to the market took around 11 days. So when we initially spoke about it, it was thought impossible, uh, but actually we did it. And this is exactly what we thought is speed would be better than probably getting into being 100% right, uh, because there are two things. One, we have to survive as an organization, and this is the need, and the nation needs this product pronto. And hence, we really had to dial up, arrange new set of vendors, um, ensure the supply chain, completely change the uh, manufacturing setup to get, get it go. So speed definitely was an essence, which we actually did. However, after all, the first batch that happened, we got reports that the constituents of the, what goes into the sanitizer is not coming into the label because the bottles were of different shape. And we had to really convince our distributor, look, we cannot have consistency of bottle because this is emergency. And speed was the essence. However, something Great. different happened. Something different happened. We, we started handling ethyl alcohol to, to manage the sanitizers. And we are primarily a cosmetics company, personal care company who don't know how to handle ethyl alcohol, which is highly flammable and can safety. And that is where we had to really decide that speed cannot be an essence here. We had to double our resource. We had to make sure that we get experts from other areas and particularly from organizations who have alcohol handling industry, spend more, increase our capex to make sure that we are 200% sure that speed is not the essence. Safety is the essence. So I think we have to ensure where speed would be paramount 
and where safety, wellness, and health will be paramount. And that's a mixture that mature leadership would demand at this point. Great. No, I, I just want to hear the perspectives. So, so how will you uh, look at it, Tanaya? Uh, because is it speed? Is it perfection based on imperfect information? It is absolutely speed. And uh, let me tell you real instances. See, when we first had a, a, a COVID case, uh, so let me tell you, in Kuwait, we had a, a, a place called Mahapula, which is an Indian locality where we had uh, COVID, which, uh, which was in the, in, the, in the community. So within 24 hours, we had to ensure that we had a hotel and we took about 80 of our employees into that hotel. Having said that, we then had somebody who tested positive and we had to ensure that, you see, when, when, when this happens in a, in a country like Kuwait, you have the Ministry of Health, you have uh, the police, you have the doctor and the ambulance, which comes and takes you. So we had that, so we had to find out who are the other people along with him. So about five of our employees went into this, uh, first it was one and then two and then three, and they were in three different sections of uh, Kuwait where they have these quarantine camps. Uh, our, our entire facility or the hotel, actually we could have done better. We, we were planning to have A, B, and C. And like uh, uh, Mr. Bhave was saying, or rather Dr. Bhave was saying, it is manufacturing is very here and now. It has to be, it can't be on satellite and you can't work from home. You have to be on the site and you have to work on the site. Uh, we, the, the entire, they decided to quarantine the entire hotel. Having said that, uh, just now we were speaking, we're trying to get into the Indian embassy. Uh, the good news is that India is working really hard. There is a task force already, which is there in India, which is in touch with us, who's been very, very, uh, uh, you know, helping out. We have a council of Indian doctors who are helping us. Uh, we are trying to, first we tried to, through our, uh, through our uh, uh, Sri Lankan, uh, who speaks Arabic, we try to get stuff into our uh, into for, for these people because it's the month of Ramadan and they don't get anything. Right now, the, some people are not getting because some Egyptians have fled from the quarantine base and we're trying to organize, uh, uh, you know, stuff. We're talking to the Indian High Commission as I speak. I was actually on the laptop trying to send uh, letters to the Indian High Commission in Kuwait to ensure that our employees are, can be quarantined in the hotel. So, so it is definitely speed. Um, you know, in in, uh, in Dubai, we had decided to start uh, our office, uh, but unfortunately, uh, we found that the hotel, uh, rather the facility management was not up to standards. We decided that uh, that's, it was better to be safe than sorry. So again, speed. So we asked everybody to work from home. In our site in uh, in uh, PNG, or Papua New Guinea, we have started opening. Again, that is a place which had sealed off its borders. It's a small island with Aborigines just above uh, Australia. Uh, where again we had to act with speed. Now, when we started this entire session, we had to open because we are building a full uh, airstrip uh, for for the landing of uh, planes. So when we had to get uh, going, we had to have standard operating procedures which were actually practiced in terms of PPEs, health, uh, you know, our health and safety measures. So this is absolutely has has to be agile. It, it, speed is. Paranormal. Great. And over there, you're not looking at, you're looking at saving life, saving situations, ensuring that you do the best that you can under those circumstances. So it's really, you, you are thinking on your feet, literally. I'm, I'm glad that we, we, are, we are coming. You know, I put the theme of speed. The next theme that I put up in the chat, and I just want you all of you to look at the chat message that I sent, is about seizing the narrative. What is the narrative that the leaders have to present? while we know the reality may not be a compelling one, which may not inspire me, but what is the narrative? So, so you know, we, we are looking at themes. The one theme was navigating, the theme came is about speed over elegance. The third theme that I need to talk about is about seize the narrative. So when I talk about seize the narrative is, is what I understand. What will the leader of a TCS talk and what will a leader of my company talk versus a Bajaj, Sanjeev Bajaj or Rahul Bajaj talking versus uh, Forge, Bharat Forge's MD talking. So the, the narrative will change. And how is it in your organization the narratives are changing? So maybe I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Bhave, that when your MD talks and seizing the narrative, talking to 33,000 families, what is the narrative that he's saying? Is it the reality or he's painting a compelling picture? Uh, well, 
uh, today morning only we have uh, exhibited the uh, you need video to be a loud mr bhave uh, today morning only we have exhibited the video clipping of our uh, chairman and managing director for the benefit of all employees and their uh, families also i'll tell you a few of the important thing what has been placed before us uh, as earlier panel member was saying about the speed and perfection uh, our chairman has placed a perfection over everything for us there let me tell you that i am coming from manufacturing background uh, would like to cite example what yesterday lg polymer at visakhapatnam they have faced for us there uh, probably they were in a process of uh, starting their plant some leakage and it costed a life of about 10 people and hundreds of people they got injured for us there now company like us where at any particular time when we are storing about 100 metric tons of lpg and therefore the people working in our company the ethos is that we need perfection probably if we have perfection then speed will follow the another thing what we are placing we are asking all people instead of getting worried why can't we spend and invest this time to ensure that we really inculcate more habits on quality to terms in for as far as facing the customers are concerned and that is the reason we have invested time for last about 35 days time on taking online classes for quality even by giving examples of mumbai dappa wala and so on and so forth and that is the reason we are ensuring to bring in more perfection in everything what we do and that is what we would like to continue that is the essence of message what our chairman has given to all employees particularly for safety earlier speaker she cited about safety health and environment we are from manufacturing organization uh, we work in temperature where about 600 to 1200 degree temperature is there when people are out for a last about 40 days time they are at their home they are in a temperature of about ranging from 15 degree to 30 degree suddenly they will barge in again up to 1000 degree temperature for is there oh my god it will be a challenging situation and that is the reason we are aiming more on perfection and that is the reason first day when we start probably hopefully on 17 we would like to invest our maximum time on taking training program of all employees for do's and don't more for don't that will probably help us in aiming for more perfection thank you yeah, i think i think well put uh, dr bhave i think you know investment in oneself is the essence of the thought uh, that your md said manufacturing company needs to invest in you. and i think ri- rightly said so if you can distract the mind to better yourself as i said there can't be a better day in our lives so shira what is what is uh, mr gopin uh, in tcs what is his Jito? thought okay i i will, I, i will uh, i will present to you as uh, as somebody who's part of the company and has been listening to him because uh, i think i don't have the pay grade to really replicate what he says but the messaging i think uh, a is uh, aligned to the overall so, so tata so code of conduct and number asel to contact kar lo karte and um, uh, and i think right from day 1 the message was that uh, was that of reassurance that nobody is going to lose their job and that was i think the first thing that uh, was very important to put across because all of us who are part of hr we needed him to say this second is that yes our first priority uh, is to deliver to the clients but also be safe so whatever we do we have to a make our systems work i think we are very lucky that we are in the digital space uh, and that's what our primary function is and that's something that we needed to enhance overnight everybody started working uh, from home the systems have had to be up and about we had people work, working 24/7 to make it happen so the safety was digital safety the safety was uh, human safety employee safety but at the same time to also uh, reassure them mentally emotionally that tcs is there we are, we will see this through nobody is going to lose their jobs through this so i think that stability which we all, everybody who's from the tatars yeah uh, kind of uh, banks upon 
is is uh, is that our leadership kind of just it was it was a reinforcement of that that stability uh, belief and faith and and saying that we are 480000 people in 46 countries we'll see this through great Does that answer your no, question? That, uh, i think i think that is tata that is uh -huh. called tata yeah you know if anything yeah. defines tata it is the heart uh, the inside heart within the outside frame and that is called tata you know these 180 people are, are dying to talk about the topic i think which is all of us are facing is about a little bit about layoffs decisions that we are taking rationalizing so i i put up this uh, thought process which i i thought Let me, was, if, if i may um you Sorry. you're saying that everybody is uh, actually looking at it differently and companies have a different way of putting it i would mm. beg to differ uh, I think this is something called connected cultures. Uh, every organization, in middle of who the leader is and who the CEO is, is looking at connected cultures. What do I mean by connected cultures? Connected cultures is, you know, where you are looking at, uh, uh, you know, mental well-being. You are looking at health and safety of employees. You are looking at motivation. You are looking at engagement. You are looking at the organization being a great place to work. I think these are the themes that run across every organization and every leader is going to say in middle of whether it is the Tata, Dilla, Ambani, Ruya, it does not really matter. I think that's what it is. And the other is the culture connection. So what is the culture connection that in these times, it is about you know putting your best foot forward, helping the community, helping the society and the system or the subsystem that you're part of. I think this, this is something which, which everybody, the themes are, uh, the way they say it might be different, but yes, it is. It is. It is a common thread which is connecting the the all aspects of the society. Middle of whether you are a corporate, you are an employee, you are uh, the organization, you are just a, a trader. I think everybody is coming together. This is something which is bringing everybody together. So, so no, sorry. I, I I think you put it very nicely. You know, somebody said to me, "Love could not bring us together. Crisis brought us together." But sure. there can't be much more better way to say you know, how we brought together. You know, and I, I completely agree. Everyone is fighting together in this uh, whole journey. You know, this 175 people that are there and they are they are putting the messages across. And they, I think they are very eager to talk about, you know, the, the, the other dimension which the COVID has brought, which is about layoffs, which is about restructuring, cost, how we are managing. You know, and, and I put up this thought saying, you know, what I put in the chat now is designed from the heart and the head. Because the hardest thing can be the softest things. And while leaders are, need to be empathetic, walk on the shoes of employees, consumers, you know, there is something called financial performance. That one is accountable to the board, to the stakeholders, to the shareholders, and everyone needs to think through this. So each one of us represents sectors. When I represent the banking and financial services, Mr. Bhavi, uh, automotive, Mr. Ghosh, FMCG, uh, Sheila on, on TCS, ITS, and Dr. Sanaya, you are representing the, the manufacturing and everything. We will start with you, uh, Mr. Ghosh. Layoffs, and and you know, you know, and people are want to understand absolutely in very simple terms. I mean, and, and, and I would would urge you that let's not circle around the toys thing using the words like rationalization, configuration. I think the audience needs to understand: Are you asking people to move on? Are you reducing their cuts? What is the language that you are talking with them? How are you enabling an employee to say, hey, this month incentive may not come? So what, what is it you're doing in Bajaj is what we want to understand from you. You're on mute, sir. No, I am not. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, OK. So just to continue with what we were discussing in the previous line and then current question, Jayadi. I think as a Bajaj group, I represent the Shishir Bajaj group who has interest in consumer power and sugar. Uh, we had straight away played, uh, gone away with the, uh, the compassionate card and said that no jobs are going. So that's a reassurance. But let me put that very clearly. That jobs may not go far. Right now at a current link, but the reality is, if we are performing at 30, 40, 50, 60 going forward, I don't think any any group, any industry uh, can afford to continue with the number and the quantum of 
stuff off the way it is today. And that's going to be reality. How are we probably going to manage both from the way we probably would do in our company and also probably the way and out in other organizations, uh, mostly. And that would come uh, through phases. And I think the first thing that many organizations would do is probably do a bit of a comp restructure where certain, certain alliances may go, depending on what they are, the leads and the accumulation of leave may go. Uh, there can be a cartelment on annual increment. There can be a suspension of annual bonus. And those are the things that may start happening on the annual compensation part. The second part is then relooking at the structure and the design. I think Definitely, if businesses are not happening the way it should be, uh, then there will be a um, force ranking. People from the bottom will start going or businesses which really haven't, uh, doesn't have a future going forward because there are certain industries or certain industry segments, uh, particularly uh, rest of food business, malls, entertainment, food, uh, definitely go have those repercussion and we are already seeing the major hotel companies the aggregators are coming up with their cuts uh, we are we are in an industry where probably we would have some other ways of sustaining but there will be really relook at hiring relook at creation of every post and there would be probably merging of roles and responsibilities so that how can two people do one work uh, there had been actually in the last one month in my organizations where resignations have happened and the departmental heads have, say, have very sheepishly asked me, do you think and had to say, look, we have to look at whether you really need to continue with that post or not. And that actually answers the, so the reality is there would be job cuts, there will be compensation restructuring. Uh, there would be somebody who would be bottom of the ladder or which may not be up to the mark in the current way need to go away. And that's the reality that is coming. But, uh, and that Mr. is Kosh, where uh, I think... Yeah, uh, yeah. Allow me to interrupt a bit. You know, I understand that part of it very clearly, uh, which is about yeah. saying, you know, may not be up to the mark skill needs. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also referring to the point that, you know, our leaders walking the talk at some point of the line, they are saying, I am at a senior to reducing my comp for the larger cause of the people. Is that a philosophy coming across in Bajaj? So right now we haven't done that because we haven't reduced any of the compensation uh, so far uh, for any of us. So that's not relevant as of now. But if at all that happens, that's a discussion that we had already had. If it happens, it would start from the top for sure. And we Very already have our discussion happening and it won't happen that everybody equally shares the burden. If it happens, the top person would definitely share the burden much more than people below. In fact, let me just add that we are actually trying to make sure that our frontline cell force, including people who work to the distributors, who are actually our frontline team, they are protected first uh, before anybody above that. Because they had been through us through thick and thin. So it will be not, it will be really our tops down approach. Yes. Good. And and, and Sheila, what's what's in TCS? What's the reward philosophy? Uh, I I think at the moment it's uh, it, it's really uh, uh, it's really looking at how everybody is managing to optimize what we have in hand so that we don't let even one ball drop. Wow. So, so I think that is really what we are looking at. And we feel that every one of our uh, people are, resource, are huge resources. What we are doing is uh, look, uh, we are assessing what is required in the new, new situation. We are figuring out what new skills uh, have to be built. We are upgrading skills uh, within the organization. That's the first before we even hire from outside so that everybody within the organization is taken care of. But I think the bottom line is that all hands on board so that we don't drop even one single ball. 
and we have we believe in ourselves that we can make this happen i think that's essentially we we will do our best we will optimize our resources our bottom line will be met i don't i i think that that's that's kind of going to happen okay so, we'll bring in another person because you know i just saw uh, somebody representing musk coming uh, debo jyoti you know and i and if he's around and if he can if he can listen to me and hear me clearly the way what what's the what's the scene in 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 musk when a a, a, cruise, a logistic company into the business of transporting on an essential service how 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 there in terms of leadership in terms of compensation in terms of how you're managing people uh, can you hear me debo debo jyoti He's there. I'll just ask him to unmute. Yeah, please tell him. And if he can just come on the screen, that would be great. Devuji is an old colleague and and a, and a prolific uh, HR veteran and works in Musk M A E R S K, the logistic and frontliner company. And I and I'm happy that he's here. And if, just as a participant, I just wanted to involve him and just uh, ask him his thoughts as, as we we. So when when he's in when he's in a position to talk, Lavani, just tell me while we move to uh, the lot of Bhavi. Sure, sure, Bhavi, sure, sure. Bhavi, what what is what is what is what is your dimension? So you heard the Tata philosophy, you heard the Bajaj thought process. When I will come on with the banking concept a little later, but what what is the automotive thinking and what is particularly uh, a person who is the hem of thirty three thousand families? What is your reward philosophy? Mr. Bhave, can you hear me? You are uh, mute. Okay. Did you hear the question, or do I repeat once again for you? Please, please, please. No, what I'm not not let a ball drop. I think that that sums up the thought process. You heard Mr. Ghosh talking about Bajaj. The philosophy is very similar. I mean, protect people as much as it can. So, in in terms of your somebody like you. Who manages who manages workers, workmen, compensation, which is much more complicated than the than the white collar that we are. So, what is your reward philosophy? Are you asking some people to go? It is on and off. You are reducing the incentive. Is there anything that you are doing on the workers worker level front? Okay, uh, let me put forward. Yesterday, my union president phoned me, and he said, "Sir, we are in an industry." where we supply automotive component it goes either to car or truck so when business will be back people will think first for roti then for kapra then for makan and uske baad mein agar paisa baki reh gaya then people will think for car or truck i said well what is that you are aiming to he said that is the reason i am suggesting management to think first and place charter of demand to union that Union should come forward and give cut for five to ten percent. I think this message from my union president answers your everything there. Absolutely, and I, I'm I'm great that you know it is walk the talk from the from the leaders. And and what's what's in in SR, Tanaya? What is the thought um, process? The dimension is is changing, and it's about understanding where are we in that entire curve. It's, just not about layoffs or, or or stuff like that it's about being future ready it is about trying to understand uh, how how are we going to work in this sphere can certain functions as you know you and me have been part of accenture three and a half years in accenture i worked from home uh, only with di attending different meetings so now even the manufacturing world is thinking that can we save on costs and can we work from home so i think it's it's about uh, agility it's about uh, multi skilling it is about liquid workforce it is about trying to understand uh, this is i think where the hr leaders are tested the most and it is how you can uh, since we are amongst the fraternity how is it that you can play your cards very well because the entire organization is looking at hr leaders in terms of optimization uh, yes there will be a lot of uh, uh, cost cutting now where that cost is being cut it could be in terms of moving to a different premises it could be moving out of a different location um but typically when it comes to layoffs uh, that is the last thing on people's mind at least in sr what we are trying to do is uh, as hr leaders we are trying to see okay this is the bonus season can we defer bonuses can we not pay bonuses uh, increments can we defer increments can we not give increments uh, can we move people from one vertical to the other you know if we have a 
uh, you know, management trainees within, uh, we can we move them to, to a different vertical? Uh, in fact, the last couple of days, we've been talking between uh, all of our different multi-locations, Kuwait, Dubai, um, Hazira, and, and I've been part of these discussions and actually leading these discussions where I see that everybody, unless it's a demobilization and, you know, people are, that work is going away. Uh, what people are trying to say is, look, can we see whether people can can move about, you know, move till, you know, can we look at, take a call at, say, September, August, which means that everybody is wanting to buy time. Everybody is wanting to see what is the advantage that one can get. So I think this is about how, as HR leaders, we are able to play that card as an HR leader. And this is about HR leaders being good negotiators. Because that is, Correct. you know, like you said, you, you said like a rock of Gibraltar. This is really the time to, to say that Correct. you have to stand firm as an HR leader and fight for your people and fight for employees. Because this is really what it is. No, I, 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 uh, I think what Tana said uh, is what it is, actually. But they, I think she, she laid down the, the contours of the discussion. It is what it is. It is about HR skills at the, at the, at the sharpest display. Now, if HR leaders don't play their roles, I think they will never get an opportunity to play their roles. COVID-19 is the platform for HR as a professional to lay down the foundation that they can corner table where it matters. That is the level of education HR can bring is, is absolutely a statement I understand. I think Tana reflected it extremely very well. You know, there's, there's a very beautiful question which has come. And, you know, it is a question of a thinking question. So I just thought I will I will share this thought. So Srinivas Patnaik, I think, has wrote a beautifully thoughtful question. I think he was hearing as leaders we are speaking and we, we manage leaders. So he's saying our leadership is well equipped in normal circumstances. Absolutely. Our, our are fit for the Indian roads. Our leadership is well equipped for normal circumstances and known business setups. But the question is whether our leadership across spectrum capable to lead with same old expertise and competencies to fight a new COVID which has come. I think what he's saying that all of our leaders have skill sets, which is like the old wine in a new bottle, because the COVID is a new bottle and our skill sets and competencies are the old. Are we as leaders doing the self-investment, that study, that thought process to combat the new? So it's a question to our to, our, to all of us. Maybe it's a question to me, it's a question to Sanaya, Srila, Dr. Bhave, Mr. Ghosh, everybody, that as HR fraternity, what is the new skills we are imparting to our leaders to manage this crisis? And I will talk with, I will first ask you, Sir Srila, because, you know, TCS is an organization frontier in learning. When it comes to learning, new things, agility, diversity, I think TCS is, is a sort of a, you know, is icon. So what is the latest training leadership courses that you are trying to do for your leaders to manage this crisis? Uh, I think one of the biggest levelers has really been for, uh, we, we have one third women, but we have two thirds men. But now all the men are washing dishes, cooking, looking after their children. So I think a lot of the masculinity barriers that we had has been kind of naturally destroyed by COVID. Having said that, I think um, uh, the upskilling that I was talking about was not really only technical. What uh, I want to go back to what Tanaya mentioned previously, uh, it's uh, related to mental well-being. It is related to empathy. So we are running these uh, resilience uh, coaching, uh, resilience leadership coaching um, uh, courses, which are all our leadership is enrolled in and is to be able to actually leverage uh, the situation and bring their best selves forward to tap into their, uh, uh, their empathy, to tap into the way. Th so it's different communications, styles with their teams it's it's different expectations from their teams the end result may we may not drop the ball on but the trajectory of movement that we go through is something that we the hr is kind of or the diversity team and the hr we are hand holding we have uh, a, a lot of psychological safety mindfulness related training happening it's and we always have these helplines we have 
uh, go to people who are there to be able to answer any questions or as uh, uh, like somebody also mentioned that it, it is a collaborative time and it is a time when everybody is being honest enough to say that you know i don't know and that is i think one of the biggest contributors that covid has had it's okay to be honest and upfront and say i don't know i don't know how to deal with this help me how to deal with it so we have lined up uh, coaches to be able to do one on one support uh, this thing we have uh, uh, of course technical skills is also there but a large part of being different managers or being inclusive managers is a part of the learning and, and these modules we've been i mean we we created overnight i think uh, we 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 just uh, there were some of us who didn't sleep for four na- four days and four nights at a row to be able to put it out there but uh, but it is helping a lot because the feedback is such uh, the uh, because we go on the ground to do these uh, flash surveys to see if anybody is uh, if, if employees are happy or not and yes i think uh, uh, being able to deal with the anxiety and the uh, and the changing mental uh, health uh, systems is, uh, is is something that i think we are have we've moved the, not the first 15 days but now i think we've settled into it uh, having said that i think i want to wa- put one thing out there is that um, because of covid women's vulnerability in domestic violence situation has also gone up so it's an appeal to everybody on this call that if you uh, know of an, uh, any uh, any of these i can send helpline uh, numbers to bcci and please be a champion of change and make that stop sorry i've talked too much back to you jet uh, that's a good insight uh, shila Uh, that uh, we we perhaps uh, try to evade at times not understanding the huge amount created in our personal lives uh, and the covid has created i mean i know a lot of people you know shomesh das gupta has put up a important question i think he manages the promoters day and day out and he's talking about cost and the other person uh, has put up a contrast question uh, which is about saying we are starting down the barrel of the gun we are the staring down the barrel of the gun and does hr have the time or the luxury of employee engagement process performance appraisal systems and the need of the hour is war footing you know i i you know when the way i look at this these type of thoughts is is very very in a different light and sense you know the crisis has brought us together but the crisis has not asked us to question the basics that whether why should we not do an appraisal why should we not do an engagement why should we not do a cost rationalization it is all about engagement any... at this point in time it is about holding employee morale whoever said okay. that engagement is not in i mean come on this is the time to be engaged with your employees to to reach out okay. to employees you know this is about you know whether it is any company because as i told you we are going through a very very tough situations where people are really don't know you know they are seeing recession staring at them like i said it is going to be physical you could have something you know like i said i had a friend from singapore call up who's had a heart attack uh, you know the the father is in in ambani 6 hours not able to do uh, anything because they are not taking any action so the, it, it's physical it is emotional it is financial i mean you really don't know this is the time to hold on together it is about engagement it is about counseling it's about coaching it's about mentoring it's about holding people's hands so how can you say that you know it is uh, engagement in you know i think the way it is being put nothing frivolous it is a very very essential thing at this point in time for all hr leaders to hold their people together sorry rester but i felt very strong Correct. I completely no, second I, that. I completely second that. That if correct. this this is where we really come in, and it's critical that we don't let anybody down. Uh, and 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 if we don't shine now, uh, like we might as well be defunct. So I think what happens actually is a lot of us uh, thinks engagement as something which is a fun thing to do, birthday celebration or anniversaries or some of that. I think in has gone much beyond that. engagement is something where you really connect connect with the employee and actually in the last 45 days my experience has been we had got chance to engage not only with the employees but their extended families much more than ever before and that's not 
really a luxury and that may not actually also be a very costly affair in fact we actually realize that engagement actually doesn't entail any cost it can be done with this digital world because people just what they need now is is a board where they can talk somebody listens they can share and the real concerns are addressed i think that today is what engagement is and that needs to be dialed up more than anything ever <laughs> I, th I think you said it. You said it, Mr. Bos. The right words. You know, the, our parochial concept of engagement is fun, cake cutting, and celebration of birthdays. I think the form of engagement has to change now, but the, the concept of engagement remains. You know, I, 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 you know, we have we have just about another thirty forty minutes for for discussions, and then we will move to uh, about a question answer session. You know, the last forty minutes. You know, we, what we have discussed now is about a, about a range of topics from leadership crisis, layoffs, forms of crisis, engagement matters. What is organization doing? You know, the the last part, which is about uh, the last theme, which I really wanted to discuss about, was. Uh, threats and when i use the word threats i'm talking about both sides of the paradigm the employer threat the employee threat and there seems to be a lost in this whole conversation something called trust earlier there was a trusted partnership between employee and employer with this covid crisis coming in various organizations the trusted partnership is getting challenged between an employee and employee at times because the employee is feeling about his job insecurity he's he's feeling about that he might lose his job he's thinking about how can he put up a brave fight and say i will go to the statutory agencies bodies lawyers labor compliance consumer compliance the employer is saying that how will i protect myself from all these threats because i don't have money to pay so the word threat has suddenly become a, a very tricky word in between the employer and employee parlance in some organizations maybe not in all organizations so i just wanted to understand you know and somebody last night was telling me that when you discuss this topic among leaders bring this element of practical practicality versus implementation I mean, while it will be easy to say that we will not do cost rationalization, but somewhere down the point, we will have to do some rationalization. So that balancing act, how as HR leaders we are playing, you know, some call it threat, some call it balancing, some call it rationalization. We are in banking and financial services, we use the word called configuration. We are, you know, everybody is using some words, but at the end of the day, we are saying, hey, we have to protect our people. But we have to protect our balance sheet as well. So, where do we stand in this thought process? And uh, maybe uh, somebody like uh, Mr. Bharve, uh, maybe we'll start with you, Dr. Bharve, that you too have a role to play where you will be forced at times to take some decisions which may not be the right for the employee, but the right for the employer. What is the approach you are doing? Are you deferring it? Are you delaying it? Are you managing it? Are you camouflaging it? He said, talk straight. This is what it is, and this is how it is. Can I go ahead? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, typically, company like uh, where I work, Bharat Forge, we work in unionized environment. Uh, we have about 3,500 to 3,800 people, those who are working as a union member, and then uh, we work at uh, four organization where we have separate settlements, separate terms condition, uh, and separate unions. So what uh, we have started doing, we have started talking with our union leaders, placing before them the present crisis, crisis for business, crisis for cost, crisis for top line, crisis for bottom line, crisis for uh, ability to take a fixed cost irrespective of whether business is on or business is not on. And then considering that, uh, we have already started giving straight messages to our union leaders, irrespective of their preparedness, that we will have to cut the cost. Now, cutting cost in what way it will come, they asked straight question. So our 
suggestion to them that we will have to come after when we stabilize our working probably a voluntary separation scheme where people are not working properly we will have to ensure that they are separated in win win situation for is there probably during last couple of years those who are not performing we will have to take a fresh stock in them uh, ours is a 55 years old company and then uh, historically there are many monkeys those who are sitting on a back uh, we should be strong enough to ensure that we put our hand to the necks of those monkeys and ensure they are put down to the floor and tell them well i mean fun is over now uh, we have almost all lost business two months straight probably to bring in business for next it will take about 3 4 months time so almost all half year revenue has gone and then we will have to ramp up whatever gone in the period of next 6 months time so probably as a hr head as a director hr i will have to be very strict uh, while dealing with the people dealing with the hods and ensuring that we work in collaborative platform and that is the reason during last about one one time uh, we have engaged our senior management team on one training module and that is collaborative platform and the title of that training is cutting the age for future whatever age what we have we want our hods and seniors to cut the age let me tell you that historically if you see in engineering and manufacturing industry the attrition rate will be ranging from 15 to 18% historically at bharat forge my attrition rate is 2.8% for last about 5 to 6 years time now whether with this reduced top line and bottom line can we afford and say in a market and make powerful presentation ppt that my rate of attrition is 2.5% people will laugh at us there whether people are laughing or not not we will start crying after 6 months time forget about laughing if we don't take a clear cut strong step and that is the reason three points we have started deliberating uh, whether our departmental heads have developed a capability of putting a positive influence on the stakeholders stakeholders mean right from line managers to workers including of contractual employees for is there uh, whether our departmental heads and people have developed capability among themselves to say no whenever people are coming with certain requirement for is there because we have grown ourselves in yes environment now we will have to learn ourselves to say and live and develop ourselves in no environment and that is the reason we would like to go ahead in next 4 to 5 months time probably in year thank you very good i think mr bhave you have you have you have spoken from the heart straight from the heart and what is practical don't increase your expenditure curtail your requirement and make the hod is empowered and i really love to what shrila just put it the third world war indeed has started and started one and one without a gun i i indeed think it is it is the third world war and we have probably spot the black swan in a covid crisis now and is how we are responding so uh, and, and dipankar uh, coming back to you uh, as mr bhave said that what is your what is it that you are saying to your leaders uh, that if it if it has to be done it has to be done and are you preparing uh, as from some sort of a you know so as, as he said the elevator speech tell the department heads to take stock what is your elevator speech to them yeah so i think um, uh, one of the thing that we had been talking regularly in our management committee meeting and instantly covid has made us do a mancom every day which used to be 15 days uh, in 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 gap so so we are we are impacting more than ever i think the one thing that's that's coming very clear is every organization has a dna a dna and every industry has a particular way of operating and and it's not that this a crisis has come and hit us for the first time we have seen 2009 uh, most of us have seen of us have seen 2001 but obviously 2021 is more severe than ever and hence in this trying times how you navigate that and come out winner is something many of us have seen uh, operating within the industry norm and also the organizational dna and how individually as leader at that point of time we can we can influence in change management in our organization what we are doing is we are absolutely relooking at 
every cost item much more in the in a, in a new scale and employees cost is actually taken as the last priority we are we are looking at lot of non employee cost to be rationalized so we we just figured out that we knew that we have around 3 and a half percent of overhead beyond normal operations so your cost of office rental your cost of administrative expenses your cost of travel if how much that are can you actually can you actually reduce that and ensure that employee expenses are touched the last and then we are actually relooking and that's the question that we are asking to our hod is, is please relook at the skill set that your team team needs because some of the skill set that we thought is not required is coming out more than ever before like communication as a skill set or collaboration as a skill set at a middle and at a junior management level was not as much important as we thought it is now so i think that's what we are we are looking at very importantly i will give you an example from an fmcg perspective uh, government relations or corporate relations is a skill that in fmcg be operating in an open market was not considered to be a very important skill but in the last two months we understood like the uh, uh, like the regulated industry even we need a lot of skill on how to deal with government officials and networking with them so who are those people who are differentiators in your team who bring those additional skill set in the new world and then rejigging your team looking at how two people can do the same job those are the few things that really make the organization agile and that is what we are having those conversations in our performance management conversation which is happening for currently online for the first time over so i can hear you the last so part is, can you be little loud the last part i can hear you <clears throat> so i i said that even currently as we as we do our performance management conversations annual those are some of the conversations that we have our managers to have ki what are those new skills that needs to be understood started during those conversation so that that helps us in having a much more agile organization yeah thank you yeah. and are, are you having attrition if i can ask you are you having attrition oh yeah okay so as an as an fmcg organization we have an attrition of 22 to 23% for the last uh, couple of years which is much lesser than what we had fmcg do have that we expect to have lesser attrition absolutely we expect to have lesser attrition here what happened and then we have to and hence attrition may not be a major going forward because of the current prevailing situation okay <clears throat> all right tana what's your thought on this whole thing that is it better to to accept and talk on a straight face or circle around the obvious look uh, this is not something which is uh, hidden organizations are there to be profitable they are not charitable organizations it is not like people did not lose jobs earlier you and me work for accenture we did have huge ventures we grew from 100 or 1000 to 200 or 1000 and then counting so it is not something which is which is not been there uh, but having said that it is about what is it that the organization is doing and the treatment of this entire uh, of this entire crisis so uh, like a lot of organizations are doing um, unskilling skilling reskilling multi skilling um, to ensure that you know uh, that people we dealing with empathy with the entire aspect of uh, what it is the other is uh, alternate professions you know so introducing alter you know so for instance uh, jaydeep you knew that i led uh, uh, the the uh, the union in accenture in bangladesh so what did we do when we were closing we introduced alternate professions to these employees i don't know what who were about to lose their i don't know what so so that's something which we did uh, of course you know when i was talking to my com- to my colleagues in other parts of the world they have something called social security unfortunately we don't have that in india but a lot of organizations or or hr organizations are trying to see what is it that they can do so it is trying to help the fraternity as well uh, this is a reality this is a harsh reality one has to understand and having said that what is it that will work therefore 
what is it that will work is probably you know things like uh, gig economy will work because you know how do you ensure that you, that you pick up a job uh, you're able to do it and and you're able to run with it and outsource it so that's something which will work mental wellness the every organization is going to spend trillions of dollars uh, uh, on on mental wellness so how do you ensure that you you do aspects of that counseling is going to be other key coaching is going to be uh, really key the, uh, the other things is building apps so i think it's it's also uh, looking at what is it that you can take away rather than just looking at our organizations going to right size are you going to go out in circles or are you going to go out straight it depends on which organization but the truth is that this is going to happen so therefore as hr leaders what is it that we are doing and what is it that we are thinking through to help our employees to go through this crisis correct no i think a uh, good point i you know i think it it is it is about what what you rightly said what will the organization do is not the controllable variable in our mind what we can do ourselves is the controllable variable and there i think hr has to play an important role you know i since you are there fila and diversity and neurodiversity you know very very loaded words in the dictionary of many a people and some understand it in the right sense some think it is an obsolete word how is this theme being implemented first i want to know i'm very curious to know in tcs how it is being done the second part i want to know is that how actively a diversity being an important theme can be implemented in a stressful time like this when you as a diversity lead what are you engaged in when how are you engaging the global population of tcs on this and why will they be interested in diversity is also another question because they are thinking about their jobs and security at this point of time so i'm just having a more of a devil advocate question just to understand what is going uh so uh thanks for the question the thing is that uh, when one is looking at diversity uh, i want to emphasize the fact that it is not a stand alone function it is an intersecting cross cutting horizontal presence uh which has to be leveraged across all hr functions whether it whether it is recruiting whether it is management whether it is um uh, uh you know so if if we are operating in 46 countries and we have 480 80000 um, employees we have huge amounts of diversity our role uh, we uh, i always see the diversity function to be like this this uh, fountain of um, as a as a center of excellence or an advisor which actually supports the hr head to optimally uh, manage or leverage the diverse resources which are already present uh just to the thing is that uh, i think that uh, that we went through this huge um uncertainty of say uh, associates with disability because they thought they would uh, be laid off because they felt that uh, probably they are the most vulnerable then uh women who are senior leaders but uh also have to now uh, look at caregiving at a different level altogether they were nervous whether they would be able to manage or not so coaching them uh, counseling uh, persons with disability so those are very specific function related but in addition to that it is that okay fine in today's day and age where you have ethiopians running away what is it that uh the hr can do to step in and mitigate uh day to day um, i won't say disasters but but day to day functional um uh, uh pop ups that okay fine today this has happened how do you resolve this and it is possible if you have a deeper understanding of where fears are coming from and that is a word that i want to use here because if you are going to use is that i think the uh, hr needs to Uh, uh uh deliver empathy based on on uh, on the understanding of fear of every diverse individual and each diverse identity really influences the nature of fear or insecurity we have it also while on the plus side it 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 contributes to the advantages and uh, and uh, and the business advantage but it also gets undermined by unique fears that each community can have 
I am a wheelchair user. I live alone, completely alone. I have no domestic help coming in for the last 45 days. I have to use my crutch and my wheelchair to get all my domestic work done. And it's not that I'm not doing it. I'm doing it. I'm, you're see, seeing me wearing a sari. Nobody will be able to say I'm sitting in a wheelchair. Nobody will be. So the thing is that, but I had immense amount of fear. Uh, not that I will be thrown out of the company, but whether I would be able to deliver optimally. So I think it is important to understand and empathize with that level of uh, you know, Th that depth of understanding, you can understand that level of diversity influences. We are not going to understand how to engage optimally. Therefore, engage resource uh, is optimally, and therefore, cost optimization. Very well. I think after you really put it the way it is, diversity as a theme is just a word in our minds. But I think you bought the connectedness with HR. So, so tell me, Fida, a little bit more on this, you know, and and the and the leaders are very uh, encouraging at this point of time to embrace this theme wholeheartedly, correct? Because you still have training programs running in TCS on these themes. Absolutely, uh, because uh, the thing is that I, I don't think it's possible to uh, separate one from the other. If you have a team of diverse members, and uh, you are. Uh, so my job as HR is not only to protect uh, all those team members and their different fears and anxieties and to reassure them, but to also work closely with the people manager uh, and the leaders so that they are able to kind of step into new facets of their roles. Something which was like lip service at one point of time is part of the reality. You are managing people remotely. You have to add dimensions of humanity and um, uh, diversity, but, but humanity, it's, it's really humanity. So you really have to uh, manage with humanity by understanding who or what comprises of your team. And, and that's, that's where the HR needs to stand like, you know, like Hercules with the, the world on his shoulders and say that, we are here, we will be there to support you, but this has to be done. I mean, you, you can't so, run away. So, so, so what you, you're saying is that you design from the heart, but execute it from the head. See, you you really, yeah, you, you summed it up beautifully, Jerry. Thank you. Correct. I was struggling Correct. for the terminology. It's... Correct. Correct, got it. You know, I'm just, just thinking, you know, Tanaya, that question has come from somebody who runs enterprises. Uh, a mid-side MSME enterprise. He runs very, very, uh, very, very successfully in Calcutta. His name is King Shuk Roy. You know, he has put up a question that while em we have so much of emphasis we are doing on employers, what they should do. His question is a very straightforward question. And I would ask you because you, you have seen the world much more than I have seen. What is government's role in this crisis? What you would ideally ask, suppose you have given a mic to say, ask the PM one question. What is it that you would ask the government to do in this time of crisis for employers, MSMEs, and employees? That's, that's almost like a 360 degree uh, view. Uh, what I would ask uh, the Prime Minister to do is to ensure that, that there's infusion of uh, adequate uh, resources for everybody, something something around social security. Today, when you go out, so today when I went out to get groceries, you know, your everyday workers coming and asking for food, how sad is that? So I think it is about uh, availability of, uh, I think subsidy is something which which we would which we should be, or the Prime Minister is something which I would like to have a discussion. Uh, ensuring that there is enough supplies uh, in terms of basic necessities and hygiene for uh, for everybody around. Uh, for the SMEs, again, uh, of course, there has been you know it, things like moratorium on uh, on uh, percentage of you know your your EMIs and stuff like that. But that really is is of not much use physically. How can you have skilling of opportunities? How can you ensure that right now is the opportunity? Of course, everybody is saying that you know Japan is going to come to India and, and the entire supply chain is going to be busted, and you know it's going to be India is the new 
India shining. So how do we ensure that we are able to showcase this to the world? Uh, because the world is looking at us differently. How can we get in alternate uh, sources of employment for our people? So I think that is really uh, what, what we should be thinking about. King Shok, are you there? Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think yeah, King Shok is thank there. Thank you. I yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you, would you Firstly, want to elaborate uh, the question and ask to Mr. Ghosh and Mr. Bhave as well? No, I uh, th firstly thank you so much, um, Jaydeep, the entire BCCI, and all eminent speakers. I think this has been a very, very engaging session. Uh, we've all been kind of getting used to webinars for last 45, 40 days, and I have been part of various webinars. But this one has been extremely, extremely uh, well maneuvered, Jaydeep. I must congratulate you. On a Friday the way you can... with no drinks, so King Shook, how can it be a better one? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a master of the ceremony now. So, uh, but then uh, you know, um, uh, it was wonderfully answered. Um, I think uh, that 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 definitely showcases a, uh, a piece. But I would also like to have some inputs from the Pongor, the um, Dr. Bhave, and uh, um, Madam also from TCS to to give their inputs because uh, we have been hearing a lot on uh, you know several several schemes that might come up for the industry. Every session where corporate CEOs and uh, you know media is interfacing, this is a discussion. But we are we are all waiting. So just wanted to understand, you know, what is your thought on this also, Mr. Bhave? Why don't Dr. Bhave? Why don't you go your your question to the PM tonight at Friday 5:15? Yes, uh, my question to PM will be that how best uh, government can promote the avenue to ensure inculcating entrepreneur capability within the uh, people, those who are leading in a front for is there. You know, economic uh, subsidy and uh, asking something to go to government and plead for is there. Uh, we know the limitation of government, probably it will not be very easy for prime minister because Prime Minister, as a leader for country, he need to take care right from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and Calcutta to Ahmedabad. It will be difficult. But then, well, instead of asking something for short term, I would like to ask something for long term. So as if, because this pandemic is going to stay, we will have to learn to stay with whatever challenges are placed before all of us there, not only for me and Bharat Kohl. So that is the reason I would like to ask for long term some issues which government can help to industries, whereby those who are in their middle age, probably they will be in a position to sell smooth for next about 15 to 20 years. Thank you. Great. Ms. Das Gupta, if Mr. Modi says, aapke saath chai pe mein kya puche aap se? Aap kya puche I mein have to dodge this question because I don't have the protocol clearance to really respond to it. We have very strict uh, public communication, uh, uh, you know, uh, protocols in place, and only like a handful of spokesperson can really uh, respond to this kind of question. Okay. So I will see how to reach that message, and I'm sure we'll have like okay. a thing. But yeah. I, I apologize, but I will not be able to answer. No, this. Mr. Ghosh, what about you? From the government, I, uh, so, yeah, I, I think, I think we, am I audible? Yeah. Can you hear? Yeah, I think private, private, private Absolutely, I'm able to hear. Yeah, I think yeah, we just lost. Yeah. We can't hear. Mr. Kosh, are you back? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, I think um, we as uh, we as private sector organizations who are primarily with a commercial motive, go back running to the government and expect their help more than often. And and most of the time, we are do not get much benefit. It is our resilience which help us win. But we have this perennial habit of 
thinking about what to ask from the government and that probably i see is the habit of the 70s and the 80s before the 90s came i think one thing that we were really looking for the government and early signals of that thing has come yesterday which is easing of labor laws or moving away from the archaic british labor laws that we were we were saddled with and i think early signals have come from mp and from gujarat that we are easing that and if i one thing to ask which actually is in the hand of uh, the pm is how can he fast track uh, ease of doing business in india yeah that would be from me. okay no uh, we will uh, we, we will uh, we have just brought half an hour left 30 minutes you know i i would love to have more conversations with the audience and interact with the speakers rather than i i getting into a uh, conversation so maybe we'll get some questions uh, coming from the people from there you know and i i i can see the list of participants here so if you all can be alert one or two people and just ask them so if we can have a question from deboshi uh, from shrey bnp deboshi are you there yes i am thanks ravi my question, question is be? yeah my question is for the nayam ma'am uh, so ma'am if we had to relaunch and we had to relaunch real soon what would be that one is here to nayam that the company would use sorry i could quite catch that yeah so one more time so if we had to relaunch and we had to relaunch real soon what would be that one strategy that your company would use as this relaunch pad or this bounce back pad so if you would try to relaunch what would you use is it what is the strategy yes. okay okay yes. so in fact, One that, strategy. that in fact it seems like it's it's scary it's almost creepy because it's like deja vu this is exactly what we're trying to do so we are looking at it from ground zero so if we were to start from ground zero uh, in terms of building everything right from the uh, the organization layers uh, in terms of uh, cost optimization in terms of how do we our engagement practices our wellness uh, you know so it is actually beginning from there what functions can can work from home how to be optimize the space uh, you know what is it that we can uh, curtail so it's actually starting from ground zero so that's really uh, what and i have actually prepared a presentation around this you know so for instance where i've done uh, delayering of structures where i've said that certain functions work from home uh, and and just interface so you know so it's everybody talks about work from home it's actually now uh, that's that's really passe it's it's really commuting or you know on the go so um, uh, how uh, what kind of uh, ergonomics are you going to have when you're working from home so i think it's it's, it's a lot of uh, uh, thinking and strategy about how do you build the organization uh, and making the the workforce future ready thank you so much that was very insightful so uh, we uh, sudanshu uh, sudanshu roy um, uh, sudanshu is the chief chro of the big group of hospitals called medica sudanshu are you there i can see you in the participant list are you there because he represents a very big sector the hospital sector and i am good good to have his views as well So if uh, if the Shrishan Shu comes back, we would love to have him. Uh, uh, would you want to ask a question, uh, Varsh? Yes, Jaydeep. Sorry, I was oh, away for some time. Hi, Shrishan Shu is there. Uh, just for the speakers, uh, let me introduce Shrishan Shu, a member of the Bengal Chamber Committee, and plus is the Chief Human Resource Officer for the Medica Group of Hospitals, a very very large chain. So great to have you, Shrishan Shu. Uh, you, yes. Would you would like to ask some questions to? for the panelists here see healthcare is facing a different kind of challenge see the it is facing challenge on both the sides the, for the panelists like on one side our income has gone down right our income has gone down and at the same time we are expected to run the facilities to provide services for the covid patients as per the social cause so it's a very very difficult situation for all of us who are there in the healthcare scenario like if i can tell you the scenario what is there today many of our staff members do not want to work with the covid patients so somehow we have to convince them we have to create a contingency team 
and we have to work with the rates which the government prescribes so there is no revenue but we cannot deduct staff salary we cannot deduct anything from the staff because one they are frontline workers second is the government is also saying that and unfortunately there is hardly any kind of support which comes from the government in terms of revenues etc so this is the challenge which we are facing from healthcare and it's a very difficult time for all of us i do not know how do we manage it and how do we sustain in a long term period i'm sure all of you are going to be aware there are a lot of hospitals which have closed down smaller hospitals bigger hospitals also if you look at it as a statistical eny did a study where almost about 70 to 80% revenues have been lost by all the hospitals even the bigger hospitals so in this current scenario i think it is important that the government or the institutions they support us to run the facility we are not cutting salaries because they are frontline workers so jaydeep uh, this is a scenario with the healthcare as of now today so mr kosh you do you want to take that question of sudanshu this uh, i i to chip can repeat the question the, the the essence of the question was smaller micro hospital if they do not get the right amount of support be it in terms of financial or in terms of other welfare measures how will they survive and then if we don't have the right structure support of hospitals how will india treat covid uh well i would yeah, like to take I it think... yeah deepankar sure, please go ahead. Ahead. Yeah, okay uh, okay so um, absolutely i think uh, i was i am um, i i have a very strong view on that i think uh, we had decided on what is prosperity based on the hard infrastructure that we have created over the years bridges roads uh, manufacturing units both considered to be the sole driver of gdp i think government needs to think about soft infrastructure and we have a very good example of kerala where the bed is to number of population is one of the best in india in kerala to be despite being covid also well i i i have been mind that i was also saying government spend too much time subsidizing and help private commercial enterprise because they are the money banks and we really need to move away from there and create a society which creates things about human development index and that can happen when spend more amount of their money that they tax on hospital and on education which currently is only 5% of gdp and i think aptly and i i was saying that currently we are seeing a time when for the first time we know that uh, we not have access to healthcare if i have a cough cold or a patient at my home the hospital may not take me is that the kind of world that we want to stay uh, if we can create a world which is focused on human development index i think the hard infrastructure and the growth comes automatically and absolutely absolutely save that point the the net thank you very much uh, dr bhave you want to take it uh yeah what i was saying that whenever we talk for expenditure part for is there for any industry you take uh the staff cost will range maybe max from 5% to 20% typically for manufacturing industry engineering industry it may be from about 10 to 15% for is there uh here is a time when we need to think that from cost point even if we subtract this 10% we need to work very seriously for uh, balance 90% and how we can come over in next about 10 months time so as whatever we have lost that we can recover and uh, let me share my experience for is there uh, we have created for last few years time and that is coming very handy for us there a collaborative platform and that is known as a hr facilitation program so every time when we say that uh, hr should be responsible and during this covid time uh, hr has a responsibility to play for is there during last about 5 6 years time we have developed about 50 hr ambassadors in an organization and they are propagating do's and do 
and that is the reason exactly we are getting proper dividend for us there so that is the idea which organizations can tap so as proper communication proper developing the brand fit for us there and then uh, proper alignment of uh, entire agility keeping everyone agile to face the future challenges probably that can help us out that is what is my Bhave, uh, can I, Jadid, can I have a question with Dr. Bhave, please? Yeah, just one second. Uh, you know, uh, the lady Alaknanda Rao from Alwari Systems. If you can introduce yourself, tell us about your company a bit, and then the question of the panelists, and then right after that, we'll ask Mr. Dr. Roy again. Alaknanda, are you there? I have put the question. Yeah, I'm there. I put the question on the chat box. I just want to ask this question to both Mr. Bhave and maybe also to Srila, because uh, post COVID, there's going to be a lot of change in the kind of demands of the products and automobile sector, for example, is likely to be affected. So are companies like Mr. Bhave's company thinking since he mentioned that you are uh, supplying to the automobile automobile sector. So are you looking strategically at different kind of products and the same with TCS. TCS supports a lot of corporates and organizations which are in the uh, kind of businesses which may be affected post COVID. So what is the strat strategic thinking on these lines? Just it's something which has been I've been wondering so I was wondering if you could share some thoughts uh, well uh, this is very specific point and we have been doing it there but then probably uh, it may not be right for me to discuss these issues in the common public platform for is there so as far as Bharat Forge is concerned uh, please excuse me that I will not be in a position to say and respond anything for this question I will make uh, mine like slightly more generic than specific. Yes, there is going to be change. Yes, the nature, uh, we expect that the nature of uh, business demands and expectations from us is going to change because all our clients are also going to go through change. And we are ready to respond to it. I think one of the uh, things that is a given is that uh, we are already in the process of creating models of remote working and uh, with safety and security and that is work in progress and it's happening and it's probably going to be we are not sure but it's probably going to be one of the asks uh, that we have it is one of the asks we are we are helping our clients on that as well but uh, but yes i think it is 45 days is too early to really see where this is going but we are open we are open to change we are expecting change so I think that is where we are at with our thinking at the moment, and we are ready to respond. So, uh, so I, if that answers. Oh, thank you, both of you. I understand, Mr. Bhave, but I'm just glad to know that there is some thinking because uh, that is important right now with the changes. Thank you, Jadeep, for giving me a chance. Thank you, Varsha Tajaria. Uh, introduce yourself and please ask your question, please. Okay, uh, can we have uh, Sudhanshu? Jaydeep, see, we are a healthcare organization. So, Mr. Bhave, our manpower cost ranges almost about 35 to 40%. That was one. Second question, which I wanted to ask the panelists is like, many of our staff members do not want to work in the hospital in the current scenario. Now, what is the engagement? What is the kind of thing that we can do to motivate them to stay tuned and support us in this crisis? Very, I think, very relevant question. You know, everybody will fear of their life to go to hospital, and the staff has to go to hospital. And what is it the engagement model to be? And I, I, while while the question he was saying, I'm just thinking and I'm struggling in my mind. And I belong to a family of doctors. There is no option for my mother and my brother and my sister-in-law to go. But I'm thinking the paramedical staff. Why will they go? So, what are your thoughts, uh, uh, Sheila, Tanaya, Ghosh? Uh, Bhave, well, how do you create an engagement model for hospital staff in COVID-19? Uh, well, uh, my personal view is that uh, CEO and leadership team of a respective organization, probably hospital, uh, will have to be in very close touch, uh, not by only e-letters, because uh, e-letters, sometimes it uh, speaks 
uh, do not really speak so hard, you know, unless uh, it is really meant for that. So it will be advisable if some senior team member talk to uh, paramedical staff and tell them the not only professional necessity, but the social requirement of their presence over there. Uh, I'll give you an example that in Pune, uh, there is one very big hospital. Uh, total nursing staff are 750. And uh, just day before yesterday, uh, uh, municipal corporation issued notice to hospital that out of 750, 500 are staying in a hostel, which is in containment zone. So naturally, all nursing staff, they were afraid of coming out for us there. So immediately hospital made an alternative arrangement for them in different hostel for us there. Chief executive went and talked to them and ensured by making separate buses for them. So, you know, some uh, act which can be really seen by people instead of just by sending letter. If that can be done, probably it can send a positive message. But there is no uh, uh, fixed methodology for us there. One has to try at least so many things out of that few things will work. Thank you, Mr. Bhave. In fact, I must add also that we, our chairman is driving this entire initiative from the front. We are there in the hospital from 6.30, 7 o'clock, and we are there till 7.30, 8 o'clock every day, or even longer if required. The chairman wow, himself is very there. Good. He's speaking to the, even the junior most nursing staff in case they are afraid, the doctors, entire fraternity, he's driving it from the front. Yeah, and I think that is exactly what I was going to say after Bhabe, sir, is that uh, you can't have the leadership kind of sitting in ivory towers in such situations. They have to be on the ground, whichever be the sector, and particularly uh, this sector, the medical sector is really uh, kind of uh, showing us, uh, like they are really the ones that we depend on completely. And, uh, and it, the reassurance really comes from leadership that we are we are here we are doing what we want you to do we are putting ourselves at risk first we want to mobilize you uh, to do the same so i think that is really what uh, the message needs to go up through multiple communications but one size does not fit all so i think everybody has to find their best solutions i think um, um... I think that there are a series of things to do. One is uh, walking the talk for the leaders. Uh, it could be the, the chair, chairman, the owner, uh, the, the functional heads. Uh, so I think it's definitely walking the talk, being there, talking to people. Uh, in, in such times, communication is key. Uh, communication uh, in terms of uh, you know top to bottom, peer level, um, um, you know, from, from the nurses upwards. So all kinds of communication that can happen needs to happen. Uh, the third thing uh, is, engage, is is recognition. Because when, when people are doing something and, and one has to recognize the kind of uh, difficulties or the kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all very emotional. It comes from within. So one has to recognize that. And, and one has to ensure that this is recognized across, uh, you know, it's not necessary. It's it's not monetary, uh, monetary, but it's something which comes from the heart. It is people like to be recognized for the kind of effort and and the and the work that they're doing. I think this is also the time where human resources has to strategize and to plan in terms of what kind of engagement methodologies are they taking to the employees. Um, what kind of communication are you planning from the CEO onto the nurses? Uh, you know, how are you also you know, maybe can, can we have a jingle that comes out that, you know, at this point in time, everybody, you know, sanitizes their hands. Uh, or for that matter, this is this is, uh, this is is something which which I, I need to do in terms of fun. You know, there was this video that went viral where all the doctors and nurses were dancing, you know. So, you know, things like that. You, you, you have to make it a happy place. It's not the best of situations, but um, I think this is, this is a lot of planning. Uh, and first of all, I would like to compliment you uh, your doctors and nurses for doing the kind of work that you do. Absolutely. Now, we have come to the end. You know, I just wanted to thank all of you. And my and my concluding part, I chat for all of you to, to think it is basically these three parts. I think respond, recover, and thrive. And all of us have to play a very important role. Here, yeah, Mr. Ghosh, Dr. Pranay Mishra, Shira Das Gupta, Mr. Bhavi, Dr. Bhave. And all this 140 people who are still there and heard us through, 
you know, thank you very much. I hope uh, we come with a decisive vaccine uh, to decisively fight this COVID-19. And I hope all of us have a time to have a drink on a Friday evening and say cheers to our lives as we embrace the new weekend that comes. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon and talk to you personally. Wishing you all a very happy and safe. And with the parting words, I hand over to Rahul Bose. Rahul, for your last and part, parting words for all of us. Hello, Joydeep. Uh, so thank you so much. I mean, Raul Bose, in mute times, we don't hear you. It's only when you're unmuted, we get to hear you. I, I really am uh, so happy that uh, on, the, on behalf of BCI, we could do it. So thank you, Joydeep, for leading the charge and to Shomeshda for really taking us through this seminar. And it's so it's such a moment that it's a weekend and yet around 100 people joined in. So my biggest salute to every everyone here. And we really look forward to the our word of resurrection and resilience. So happily put it. Thanks. Thanks all. Hope to see you soon on the other side of the fence. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.